Listen, Abel, back on your podcast, In Your Ears. Uh, hello, my name is Angus O'Loughlin. I'm one half of the hosting of the show. Dylan Orcott, hello. G'day, Angus. So good to be back. And I think this is my favorite thing that I'm doing in my life at the moment. Yeah. Listen, Abel, I really am enjoying it. And um, the response that we've had from people that are listening is why we did it. You know what I mean? Like we just really wanted to shine a light on people with a disability and people that are involved in their lives, you know, family members, um, people in the community and the response has been super cool and uh, I'm pretty excited about the people that are coming up on today's episode. Well, we keep breaking down every single time. We uh, we keep saying every episode is different. Uh, we had your partner on Chantel. She was the first person without a disability on the podcast. Uh, we've had mothers come in and today we're joined by not one, but for the first time, two guests in the studio. And unfortunately for our egos, they're both more famous than oh, both of way us. Way more famous. Which than I us. like normally like being the most famous person <laughs> in a room, and I'm not. All and, right. All right. Let's we introduce them. Let's let them introduce themselves. I'm Mo, and this is my beautiful sister. Yeah. What's your name? Vinny. Vinny who? Vinny Hope. Vinny Hope, who just had a birthday four days oh, ago. Oh, happy birthday, Vinny! Hey, Vinny. Mo and Vinny Hope, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, listen, Abel, when we threw it out to, to our listeners, people that, who were, they wanted to hear mm -hmm. on this podcast, your names came up heaps. So we really appreciate it. Vinny, how was your birthday? Good. Good. What did you do? You can um, I got more presents. Woo! You got presents. What'd you get? Very does iTunes. Nice. Oh, wow. iTunes. And money. Money. Great. And how much money? Very does money. Thirty dollars. Thirty yeah. bucks. So she's richer than me oh, right now. Pretty good. Yeah. Before we get in, into into your lives, I've got to say, Vinny, as an athlete, I've been watching you train <laughs> on social media. You've been killing it. Are you? Are you? What have you been doing? Uh, running on treadmill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you feeling a lot fitter? How, yeah. You can tell everyone. So, how long do you go, go on a treadmill for every day? How long? What's the What's the number you have to look for? Eighty. 80, 80 minutes. What? 80 minutes? 80 minutes straight, nonstop. And she covers about uh, between five to seven K and over a thousand calories. That's good. Do you know how long I can walk for? Not 80 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> now, Dylan did uh, just jump over the fact that we have had a lot of requests uh, for you both to join us on the podcast. So much so, let me read out a message from this morning at 11.38, unsolicited to my Instagram. Hi, I have to mention, I have a fan guest selection. Or suggestion, Moana Hope. I bloody love her, and I feel like she gets interviewed a lot about sport and her relationship, but not about being a primary carer for her sis, Vinny. And then I wrote back, you won't believe it, she's in the studio this morning. Oh, see, Vinny, you are popular. Very. <laughs> I swear, you know what's so funny is that my Instagram, people message me every day. Not for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's when's Vinny doing her training or... You know, we want to talk to Vinny and, and I love it. Like, I absolutely love that. And people, people have asked me as well, are you going to get her an Instagram? And I'm a solid no on that because she is beautiful and, and unscarred and, and she can't read and stuff like that. But I love her the way she is and she's not infact infatuated by all of that. So having her through mine, people were just yeah. full obsessed. Well, we've had heaps of messages come through. So can we ask uh, Vinny what uh, your disability is? Do you, do you know how to say it? Um, so Vinny has, was born with Mebius syndrome. Okay. So when she was born, she was pretty much like a vegetable. Um, and the doctors actually said she's not going to last very long. And she was the second one ever born with it. Um, so, and the only other person that was born with it was from America. So our specialist at the Royal Children's flew to America to see what they could do. Oh. So pretty much because she couldn't move anything and couldn't do, do anything, um, like my dad would literally sit there and save her life every couple of hours because her nose would get banged up, um, from snot. So yeah. you'd have to suck it out. Otherwise she would stop breathing. So he would, she would start to go purple. He would suck it out and we'd be with, with her 24 seven. And then I just could not believe, um, her, I guess how much she was developing. Cause then they, she didn't walk for a very long time. Um, and then they, they put together a bike and had her arms and legs strapped in and we would push the bike around and it would move her arms and legs. And then the older she got, the more, you know, we got a special things like, um, oh, what's that? It's like that movie, um, Forrest Gump. Like AFOs. Those, oh, yeah. Right. I used to wear, I used to call them UFOs when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. AFOs, yeah. So they go around your, like, um, splints around your legs to help yep. straighten and walk. That's exactly what they, she had. And because her feet were turned in or a bit turned in, um, it, that's what they had on there as well. So we would, 
you know, push around on bikes and stuff like that. And then, you know, she is now um, Vinny and I love that. Like yeah. that's, you know, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. So Mo, how much older are you than Vinny? Oh, um, I reckon I'm younger. <laughs> am, I, am I younger than you? No. How old are you? 27. How old am I? 18. No, 18. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've trained well trained. her well. Yeah. Well trained. I've taught, like today I took her to the physio and I was like, how old are you? And she goes, you're 32 and old. Uh, and I was like, no, say the fake one. She's like 18. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm five years older. Can you remember what it was like for you when Vinny was born and, and it was first realized that she had a disability? To be completely honest, and I'm nothing ever but honest, but we didn't see her any different. I think, um, you know, it, it was, uh, the doctor said it was a credit to have such a big family because she always had somebody around her, someone with her, someone hanging out with her and playing with her. So she was always constantly doing something rather than just laying flat. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, the household I grew up in is, was just like, she was just another one of us. So, you know, helping her wasn't a job. It was just like, yeah, let's, let's get her around. And Vinny, can you, um, how, how good is Mo as a sister, especially growing up? Was she good? You can be honest. Mm. Go on. Yes. Yeah, very good. Was I good growing up? Like, did I help you a lot or who was the best helping you? Be honest. Cause everyone's going to listen to this and I'll give you that 20 bucks. If you say me. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's $50 yeah. for your birthday. <laughs> yeah. Was I good when we were growing up? Think about it. Think about it. All right, okay. Bro. We'll get, we'll get back Think to it. We'll ask you at the end of the podcast. All right. Cool. Um, so growing up, you did have a big family. Uh, were there you of, uh, from what I imagine from the relationship I've seen uh, from watching the television survivor, which we'll get to, um, you're incredibly close and I can, I know that you've probably been close ever since uh, you guys were kids, but being in such a large family, how many brothers and sisters have you got? It means huge. We've got 14, 14, 14 brothers and sisters. And I lost count on nieces and nephews in the fall. Wow. That's a course. busy, in busy household. Yeah. But did some of your brothers and sisters um, take on that role more than others? Did some of your brothers and sisters struggle with having a disabled sister? Um, to be honest, it, it takes a lot of patience and mm. there was only a, a few of us that had that, that patience. I'm not saying my brothers and sisters don't have patience. I'm saying, you know, when you have someone with disability like Vinny, you know, <clears throat> she's lived with me for about, you know, seven years and it, it's taken me six years to teach her how to fully dress herself. So it really is patience and, and repeating the same thing over and over to create a habit. Um, so, but then she also had special connections with certain people and I just happened to be one of those. Yeah. So from a baby, it was always, we were being close since you were little tiny kids. Mm. How did you go as that role as, I guess, Vinny's protector? Um, have you ever faced bullying, like discrimination to, towards her? To be honest, all the time. Yeah. And I, I left it up on my Instagram the other day because I was just like, I've had enough. But people say the most horrendous things. Like, um, I'm not even going to say it because she can't, re she can't spell it anyway. She just doesn't know. Yeah. But it's best it's, for her not to. And, but it's things that you just don't say to any human being, m even more so somebody with special needs and they're making fun of that disability yeah. and, and the way they look and stuff like that. And for me, cause you know, everyone's like, you know, you're Mo, you just got to behave. I'm like, sometimes I do want to like call them up and be like, Where's your mum? Because clearly you weren't raised well mm. to be, to be that low, to say those things. Yeah. Well, I mean, it happened to, you know, I struggled at high school. People used to call me a cripple and a spastic to my face. And like the R word is a word that I hate that I know would get thrown a, a, around a lot. And I, I've seen it on your social media. People say shit like that. And it's, it's disgusting. And, and when people even say it in like, you know, a term like that would say it, Oh, you dropped your drink, you're an R uh, or whatever it is. Mm. It has a bad effect, doesn't it? On, on people like us that, that are affected by disability. Yeah. And I, I hate it that they use it in such a negative term. So nobody in my circle or in my life will use that fluently. Cause if they do, they wouldn't be in my circle or in my life mm -hmm. because if you're going to use it negatively, then what are you saying about my mm. sister? It's just not, you know, I just hate that word. I hate it. And I think that it just needs to be taught teach kids from a young age, what's right from wrong. Can I, um, say, I mean, a credit to both of you or, you know, f f from a social media point of view aspect, um, because you put yourselves out there in this space and you're going to get a lot of love for it. Now, hopefully from this podcast, people are going to appreciate, um, your stories, but you do also get the other side of that, of people saying those sorts of comments. Do you both struggle at times with 
getting so many 99 nice comments and, and one nasty comment. And how do you deal with it? Knowing being in the public eye for you to blast that person, um, there's going to be more retaliation on you for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. I think that for me, um, you're hundred percent right. That's one thing. I think when I first started playing footy and I started becoming in the public eye, it was so hard for me to, you know, bite your tongue. To, to bite your tongue. Yeah. And then also, I don't know what it was when I first came into the public. It was, it was against you as well, Mo, not yeah. just you and Vinny. No, yeah, yeah. it was hundred yeah. percent me. And it was, you know, mostly about, um, being a lesbian and, and some of the things that, that people would say to me is get a certain man's part in you and get back in the kitchen. It's those kind of things that I would get repetitively. Um, so for me, it was like, I had, it was hard. Like, I, as you said, I'd get 99 good and one bad for some reason, your mind thinks about the bad. Of course. And then like the more, um, you know, the more I think about it and sit and talk to people, I've just come to the understanding that people who have something negative to say are just people who are lonely sitting at home and got nothing better to do with their lives because they they just, they can't have friends for that particular reason. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like, I pity them because that's what you're going through and whatever you're going through must've been pretty harsh to mm. make you such a bad person. But then I'm also, there's a flip side of me where I'm like, I was sort of don't want my family ever to see it cause they're super protective. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and not that they would do anything bad, but they would say something back because, and rightfully so, sure they should. If somebody's having a, in uh, real life, if someone says something bad about my sister, I'm going to say something bad about you. Exactly. Mm. Um, and that's hundred percent right. And I, I remember the first time like my family, we're going to do something. It was so funny. Um, and I'll tell you the story. It was, it was season two of the AFLW and it was like week two and so many people just written such bad stuff about me, um, in the media and stuff like that. And it was week two. My brother called me and he was like, have you seen the paper? And I'm like, nah. And if my brother called me, I was like, it's gotta be good. Eh? Yeah. So then <laughs> you like, taking a screamer. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check it. And then I was making my way down to the shops to get the paper. And my sister calls me. She goes, have you got it yet? I'm like, I haven't got it, but I'm pretty excited for yeah. it. And this is like, I was going through a pretty crappy patch. And there was a back page and it was all pretty much the headline was most shit. That was it. Oh. Yeah. And it was just like a really negative um, article about me. And then my mum called me and she had me on loudspeaker and she had all my brothers and sisters in the kitchen. And she goes, we found the dude who wrote it. We looked him up on Facebook. What do you want us to say? <laughs> <laughs> Ready to unload the clip. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, log out. Let me guess. There imagine... was a photo of a ute. <laughs> oh, go <girl>, confederate <laughs> flag. Um, I was like, log out. Imagine tomorrow's papers. Hope family goes crazy. Mm. Um, but that's, just, that's my family. So for me, it's kind of like doing what's right because I'm teaching kids not to give in to bullies. Mm. Like don't give in to someone that's got something negative to say about you. Walk away from them because they're just... So it's clearly something's going wrong in their lives and be so hurtful to, you know, don't give into it. So if I gave into it and attacked back, I'm just as bad as them. Yeah. However, there is times where if, if I can set them straight, hundred percent, I'll set them straight. Hey Vinny, when you see Mo in the paper or on TV, how does that make you feel? Happy. Happy? Mm. What? Why happy? Why are we in games? Yeah. Cause she's winning games. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Does it make you feel really proud of her? Yep. Oh, I love hearing that. What yeah. was your, what was your, um, remember how you always used to save my photos in your phone? Mm. Yeah. Um, and then when you, even when you see me and you on Survivor, did you, how'd you feel when we were watching that? Cause we were all, we were all crying of happiness, <laughs> weren't we? Did you love it? Yep. Yeah. What yeah. was your favorite part? We're running cubby. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that in a bit because yeah. that was one of my oh, favorite emotional TV moments. <laughs> 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 we were all, I text Dylan. I'm like, dude, I'm crying. He's like. We're crying. Yeah, I was, I was, like, I was, was crying. Yeah. I knew it was coming. We're all in tears. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I do have a question quickly, just going back about onto social media, knowing that you're getting slammed for you being you, um, you know, the way you dress, the way you play footy, uh, your love. When was the decision to go public with having Vinny on there, knowing that there are so many negative uh, people uh, online? Did it take a while? Was it a, was it a decision to post a photo up of Vinny and you? No, I'm 100% proud of her. Yeah. And if somebody has something to say, if, unless you're going to say it to my face, I'll block and delete you. All right. Um, so that's so the for end. me, it's like, she's always been on my social media since be way before footy. Um, and I've been proud of her since she's been a baby. So I'm not hiding nothing and I've never hidden anything in my life. I'm pretty straight up and down. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that's the kind of why I live with no regrets. Just like, you know, I live my way, we live our way, you live your way. I'm not hate speech and nothing. Like, you know, it's all love. love yeah. it. I mean, one of the best things I did, this sounds pretty stupid, but 
was the host of the footy show for all the four weeks, right? <laughs> and it got sacked and so many people were abusive online towards us. And it was so great because it made me realize how much I don't give a shit yeah. about what they said. It was yeah. the first time I used to read comments and yeah. be like, oh, I, I said something on radio and someone abused you. And you're like, oh, you think, why don't people like me? What am I doing wrong? Whatever it is. I just don't care about those people and their comments because you know yourself that you're a good person and you do the right thing and you look after your family and I'm just being me. And if someone wants to write, Hey mate, wheelchair, no legs. What are you on a footy show for? Like that guy can just, that's actually a genuine question. That's what they used to say. Wow. Wheelchair, just, no legs. He goes, we're wheelchair, no legs back on the footy show. They can ship off cause I don't care about them. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's a good lesson because the best thing that you do and that I try and do as well, Vinny and Mo is we normalize disability because we're proud of the people that we are. And for someone that's about to have a child who's intellectually disabled or a sister who might not be proud of them, they would see this and be like, oh my God, you know, I love that. And that's what I'm going to do. And the only way you learn is through lived experience. It's not from reading a textbook. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think that's why the stuff that you do is so powerful. And that's why I've been training harder because Vinny's been putting me to shame because <laughs> she's been dominating. Do you know what I love? And a story I want to share with you, because I did see your Instagram a little while ago about the idiots who parked into disabled parking, because that happens all the time. So Vinny has a disability sticker and I, um, I go to park in disability because I've got Vinny and she'll always stop me and she'll go, no, we're not parking here. This is for people with wheelchairs. Good on you. And I love that. Like, this is her. Like, this is who she is. And then you got uh, all Lowe. of her friends yeah. are, are at school who are in wheelchairs, she helps them every single day, but she doesn't see him any different. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I, I do love... see on my friend Lizzie on, on taxis, on the taxi bumps. You help, she, she helps push him onto the taxi. Awesome. I'll put the brakes on. I'll put the finger around the way and say, kiss him say, bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do you, go to, do you go to school? Yep. Oh, cool. In Enda. Oh, beautiful. How yeah. long have you been there for? Um, so this was a new school I started for them. Um, yeah, so it was um, when Vinny's school, unfortunately, um, I'm going to call it politics, you know, had, we were making 24 million a year and out of nowhere closed it down and didn't give a reasonable explanation. And then also gave all the students three months to find somewhere else. First of all, due to the NDIS, all the special needs schools are being closed down they with are. no explanation. Mm -hmm. Because they're um, yeah, going elsewhere to make money. It's a bummer. Yeah. And then, um, so... First of all, they're all being closed down. And second of all, people with disability or um, special needs, they their transitional period is a minimum of six months. So they screwed everyone over there. And we tried to get help, so much help, and we didn't get it. And then we just sort of suffered. So we just got some really good people on board and just started a brand new one. And that's where she goes. So where's the school? So who runs it? What, you what can happened? tell them. In Glen Roy. Glen it's Roy. In, yeah. How and many people are there? Vinny. Lost. Uh, Lots. All of our friends went. This was like 94 students. And then we, we, we made sure that they, um, as a collective, that the place was big enough to take on more because places were shutting down. Um, so it's, it's amazing. And I love that she's learning so much more at this new school. It's, it's insane. Like one of the things she learned, which I'll share with you because it was so cute, was um, I was going out for dinner with Belle and Vinny had stopped us and goes, no, wait. And I was like, wait. What? She goes, when you go out tonight, make sure nobody puts Panadol in your water. <laughs> okay. Spiking drinks. Mm. Okay, right. So she's learned about getting your drinks Good. spiked. Oh. And her interpretation is the Panadol in the water. Right. right? Oh. So they're little things that, you know. Life skills. Life skills mm. that they're learning um, in which we, you know, we've learned a long time ago. So I love that. And I love those little stories. And I'm, I, I knew about your school as well. And I just want to say, like, to bring 94 kids over. Well, not kids, students, um, straight over. Like you said, the, the, the weight between that time is so vulnerable as well. It's an amazing thing that you did. It's a really beautiful I want to swear you're an effing legend. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that because yeah. not only providing for your sister, but for other people that are, you know, vulnerable in our community who would have often get left by the wayside. People it's like, setting a standard like as well. Yeah. I, I actually know a lot of her friends cause I go there every Easter and Christmas to give them an Easter party and a Christmas party at their school. Um, and a lot of those students don't have families. Mm. A lot of those students were just given up because one, maybe the parents couldn't take care of it or they just didn't want to. Um, either way, they're stuck in a share home. So there's so many kids and adults who are stuck in share homes where it's like six people and have a carer come in and the carers rotate, but they don't have TVs and they don't go out in the community and their, their only outing is school. Mm. So you can imagine when that one thing gets taken away, it's pretty much what everyone's struggling with right now. Yeah. And that is isolation. Yeah. So now imagine 
these um, humans who are amazing, full of love, who have nobody to do that with them. But their one thing is school and then somebody, because, you know, they spent the money, decided to go, you know what, we're going to close it and just stick with something else. It's going to make us more money. Brilliant. Um, congratulations on your relationship. Married? Married at first sight? No. No, no, no. no. But <laughs> married? <laughs> <laughs> but you're married? Uh, yeah, I did. I got, I got married four days before I flew out to Survivor. You did. And Vinny was our flower girl and our, our best girl. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't just uh, two rings exchanged during that ceremony, was there? No, yes, there was one no, more ring. One more ring. You want to you tell them what ring? happened? They both me rings. Uh, family, their yeah, family. Explain what happened. Well, how did it happen? Talking to him. What? Explain how did it happen? What happened? How did you get it? How did I give it to you? Call me over. Yeah, and then what happened? I win it. Yeah. From my finger. Yeah. So there was a ring for you as well, Vinny. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Because you made a commitment to your wife, of course. Yeah. But you've made a lifelong commitment to your sister as well, which I found really, really beautiful. When I read it, I was like, oh, God, so yeah. lovely. No, we, we, we wouldn't. We wanted Vinny to be involved as much as possible on a day, which is why she was kind of part of both of our bridal parties. She was our flower girl. And then we wanted to surprise her with her own ring so that she felt a part of the whole wedding um, proposal connection forever feel. And she is our forever. So, um, no other man or woman's allowed to put a ring on that finger except us. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> hey, she's looking pretty fit at the moment, so uh, be careful. Yeah, I've got to fight the boys off, don't worry. Right. <laughs> hey. I've got one. No. What? what? It's my fave player. Who? Me? Hey. Oh, I'm taken, okay. but hey. You know, that's so you're video? funny. You're funny on, uh, on TV show. He's very <laughs> funny, isn't he? You're annoying the people. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. I'll take that. Nice. Hey, when you met Belle and that, and it came together, your relationship, um, it can be, if you have no exposure to disability, it can be confronting. Mm. How did that process go? So I'm very protective over Vinny, super protective. Um, and when I first met Belle, it took me maybe two, three weeks before I introduced her to Vinny. Cause I was like, I need to make sure this is, I'm comfortable with it. Mm. Vinny's okay with it. And of course I want to make sure that if I'm introducing Vinny to a person that I see myself with or being with, um, you know, I want to make sure that Vinny's number one and they know that. And it took me a couple of weeks and when they first hung out, like I got a little bit jealous because Belle was taking that attention off me. <laughs> and I was like, this is, ins this is ridiculous. This is, this is, that's m she's my girl. <laughs> Give me back Vinny. Yeah. Um, and that, at that moment I knew it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, can, was there a, is there a picture if you closed your eyes and think about two of the two of them together, is there something that sticks out? Yeah. Um, Belle always gets her to help her cook. So Belle's teaching her how to peel potatoes and stuff like that. Nice. And when Belle first came over, she took her into the kitchen and got her to help her make the dinner, which I thought was beautiful because she didn't just go, oh, your special needs, I'll leave you. Mm -hmm. And and that she said to me, she was like, oh, yeah, I said to Belle, I actually said to Belle, I go, she can't do that. She goes, yes, she can. Um, she's more than capable. I'll teach her. And then she taught her how to do a couple of things in the kitchen and um, work the dishwasher. And so it's just those little things. And that moment of her saying that, I was like, yeah. yeah. Nice. Vinny, are you a good cook? Yep. Get, wait, ah, wait for this one. <laughs> yes, Am I a good cook? No, yes. No. Oh. You, she always says oh, I'm the worst cook because oh. I burn, burn the food. Yeah. Oh, hey, okay. I watched Survivor. I didn't see Mo cook once. So <laughs> I'm with you. Hey, um, was that the first time you'd given up, you know, that part of yourself with Vinny, with somebody else, that trust? Was that the first time you fully entrusted somebody else with? Outside like, the family. Outside of your family, that, that love and I guess guidance towards Vinny? That was the first time. Yeah. After I actually decided before Belle I was going to be single forever. I had it all planned out. Yeah. Um, and so for me, yeah, that was the first time I was able to really trust someone that I could leave the house and know that Vinny's going to be okay. How'd you go? Were you, was that nerve wracking? How'd you go the first couple of times? Took me a while. Yeah. It took me, it took me, a, uh, actually took me a long time. <clears throat> and there's still things to this day where Belle's like, she's going to be okay. And I'm like, no, like, you know, but, um, yeah, it took me a while and it's only cause I'm anxious cause you know, she's my world. And if anything happened, I'm aware that fully on me and she's so precious. I just want to protect her. <laughs> well, sense. I guess that leads into, or we'll go there in a sec, but I want to know about growing up. Um, you know, you, you, you didn't come from money or anything like that. You worked your ass off to be able to provide for, for your sister and become such a successful football footballer. And now, now a media personality. Do you reckon Vinny was part of that drive for you to, to become so elite at what you did? Yeah, I, 
Absolutely. I think that the way I grew up was people from the outside would say we grew up poor. Um, but people on the inside would know we grew up with, with the most love and that's something you cannot buy. And I think, you know, my, my mom's an absolute angel. Like when my dad passed away when I was 12, <clears throat> she, there was 19 of us kids living in that house and she raised 19 kids by working night shift and throughout the day would have stuff done and sleep and go back for night shift. And I watched that woman do that year after year after year, sacrificing everything, didn't have a life, didn't have, you know, she never, we never had anything brand new. We didn't have a brand new couch, we didn't have brand new knives and forks. Nothing was new and that's fine. And I was so happy with that. But watching her sacrifices to make sure that the most important things were there, which was food on the table, clothes on our back and roof over the head. That's a great example for me to live with. So for me, it's more, it's like work, work, work. I'm a female footballer. I ain't get paid nothing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's still my full-time job is just working my backside off to make sure because at the end of the day, my responsibility is Vinny and my mom and my family. So if I'm not working, people ain't eating. Mm -hmm. And that's something that drives me, but I love that, that I have that responsibility. I think it's a great segue into Survivor because that sentiment was showed across every single episode. It was made really um, well known that you were doing everything for your family. This wasn't you winning. This was life changing money for your family. Mm. This wasn't a, a Lamborghini or a new car. This was food on the table, you know, and a, and a bit of a getting their head maybe a little bit. Um, can you talk about Survivor as an experience and going back to what you said, was it one of the longest times that you've been yeah. away from Vinny? It was the longest time I've been yeah. away from Vinny, hundred percent. And, and I, yeah, I was there purely for family. I don't even know how many zeros are in a half a million dollars. So, <laughs> you, you know, I don't know that kind of money. I still live paycheck to paycheck like everybody else. Um, so for me, you know, my mum's health isn't great and, um, I want to make sure that we are taken care of no matter what. So that money could have helped buy a house or give, I put a deposit on a house or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, money doesn't make the world go around. So I'm not. You know, I'm shadowed in win, but I'm not like, it's not the end of the world for me. It's keep working hard. And hopefully it opens opportunities going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope so. But at the same time, I have this beautiful girl and I've got my beautiful wife and I've got my, my, my family. So what's more important than those things, I think. Um, and that's something I've always been, but the experience itself was insane. Definitely the longest I've ever mm. been away. That's why we were all crying when I first seen, um, Vinny and Bella on the beach. It was so beautiful. When you made that choice to go, were you just sitting there thinking, how am I going to spend 50 days away? Especially that first from time. From your wife. Yeah. Honestly, like it, um, so when you, when you leave for Survivor, um, you get chaperoned onto the island. So you have someone who escorts you onto the, or not onto the island, sorry, onto the island where it's played. And then you're in a villa for four days. Phones, by, no by phone. yourself, no phones, oh, no TV. Even that's hard. No TV, no mm. music. You've got to be in this a room, just a small villa, one bedroom villa. You cannot go outside the doors because there's a lot of other villas around that people right. are in. Um, so those first four days, I spent 95% of the time just horribly crying oh, because I was like so unsure of, because when I had left them, she was a mess and I was like, I've never seen her like that. And I've created something and I've given her anxiety and I've never done that for my life. So I was a mess. I was like four days of just crying going, Oh my God, I've just made, you know, the one person who doesn't normally feel like that, feel like that. Um, so it was so hard and it was kind of like, you know, if you get through this 50 days and you win, imagine the happiness mm. that that could help bring, even though she doesn't know what money is by having a house that we have to worry about. Rent. And that means I can work less mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Did, Vinny, did you miss Mo when she was on Survivor? Yep. Yeah. How much? I don't know. Tiny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what did you do, Vinny, when um, Mo was not on the television, but she was away for that time? What were you doing to think about her? Go on to Survivor. So when I was on, when I went to Survivor, what were you thinking? Were you happy? Were you sad? Were you missing me? Were you looking at photos? Look at the photos. Yeah. Uh, and, and what about when, when, um, when Bal said, we're going to Fiji. What was that like? Happy. Yeah. <laughs> and then what happened? What happened? I said, thank God we're going to see my own sister. Yeah. Oh. And didn't you get a spray tan? <laughs> I got a spray tan. Yes. yes. And my nails done. <laughs> yeah. And my fingers done. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And yeah. you looked beautiful. Yeah. I went to the airport. Yeah. At and 12 o'clock. At 12 o'clock. Jonathan yeah. Lapali, he gets a spray tan too. Oh. You were looking, no, you were looking no more. No, he's not. Oh, he's oh. real. Yeah. No, he's not. 
He's my favorite. Oh, yeah. I thought I was your favorite. Oh, you're the oh. wrong person. He's my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, and the I, I got to give you credit on just how bloody well you played. Like, were you super proud of yourself? Because obviously you've been on Survivor before, but for health reasons, you had to come home. Can you talk a bit about that, but also just about your performance out there? Yeah, the first time I went on, I was, I, like, I got really sick. That, Of course, as normal, they can't show the whole thing. I don't want the show to be about me either. But mm -hmm. people don't understand that I was, like, I was sick for, like, nine days in total. And in those nine days, um, of those five days, I'd lost seven kilos, seven kilos in five days. So I was just, like, like I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink. I was vomiting up everything I was drinking. Good for your modeling career though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was in a really bad way and I was coming back into an AFLW season. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I continue to go down this path, it's going to put me in a really bad position when I go, when I come back and it could, you know, stuff up that. So it was kind of putting my health first, making sure that I'm okay. And that's the most important thing. So yeah, I did end it short, but, um, going back on and lasting 50 days, mm. especially when I, when it first came on, of course, you know, the trolls, what's Mo doing on it? She's never going to last. She quit last time. I loved that I made it to the end. Cause I was yeah. like, and what? <laughs> mm. And led. Yeah. And was like the leader of the, 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 the tribe for such a long time. Oh, I loved it. I think that you want to do it and I want you to do it and you should do it. Well, yeah. I, I threw out there on my socials that I wanted to survive a, being in a wheelchair and People are getting around it, even surviving, like messaging. But, um, I get bogged in the sand. Would you, uh, we asked, we asked, we had the golden God we did. Dave on our radio show. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we host a weekend radio show and Angus asked him the question. You can ask him now. I said, uh, if Dylan was to fall behind during a challenge and it's obvious that, uh, his disability is becoming the way of that, would he go back and help him? And David said, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Charge on. And then he said, if we were what having a, a wrestle, you know, like the wrestle yeah, matches, yeah, yeah. would you go easy? And he's like, oh, no way. He's like, he's like I'd pick you. I was like, good answer. <laughs> yeah, right. So do you, do you think Dylan would be a good person to go oh. on to? Because there has been a, a, what was the gentleman who had the leg loss? Uh, Damo. Damo. So Damien Tomlinson. Yeah, he was a returned uh, army, army serviceman right. who lost his legs. Yeah. 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 No, I think a hundred percent. I think what, you know, it's the funny thing is um, in the positions that I'm in, I get to meet and, and get to know a lot of pretty cool people. Mm. But there was no one Vinny was more excited to see than meeting you today. And I think, you know, when you think about the people that she's met, it's a, it's a massive deal. And I think that you can have an impact on myself and Vinny and people like that. Imagine how much strength people will get from watching you dom dominate Survivor. And, mate, if people are not going to help you carry around, they're just going to look like a-holes. And then we vote them out. <laughs> we vote them out. Yeah. <laughs> um, are they... Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. And I feel the same way about you too. So that's why it's so nice to have you on. And, um, are they slinging your bananas and shit when the cameras aren't on? I'm not even like, I, yeah. don't, I don't lie. There's no, there's, this is a real reality TV. This is not scripted like those other shows. This is not made up. Mm. This is none of that BS. Like, like I'm a celeb Shane Warren got cigarettes on the side. There's none of that happening. Man, there is nothing. It's a like, real jungle. It's an actual jungle. Like you can't get nothing. Like Dave, who you would have, you had on, he's spider bot on, he's, us was huge and it was like oozing Oof. and it was just the sickest thing and it's just kind of like quit or game on mm -hmm. um and there's no extra food there's no side things that's why people get so excited when you win a food challenge so it is it's the one question people ask is is it real it's the realest thing you'll ever do because it's there's nothing scripted nobody tells you what to say even though some contestants might come out and mm. say something different it's just because people don't get the edit that they want and yeah. i understand it like do you, like, I think I could have had a bigger edit, but do you reckon I care? No, no. it's part of TV. Um, and that happens. So for me, it's kind of like, it's real and everything that's filmed has happened. So it's real. Yeah. Nice. Um, I want to read out a headline from, oh, oh, is this about Survivor? No. Can I ask one more question? Go. Do you think you would have won if you got to the final two? Yeah. Yeah. I you think, think your story was better than Dave's? I yeah. think when you get up there and you talk about the school, your life, shit, it is good. Yeah. And mm. I think it, you know. I mean, as much as Dave's money was going towards his family as to, well, yeah. I mean, I think your story when what it do, comes to what the money's going towards. What do you think? I, and, you, and your gameplay. I love, like, I love Dave, but I know that the game that I played, it just wasn't as um, characteristic as his. Like, I wasn't a character. Mm -hmm. I just played it as normal as I wanted to play it and didn't beat my chest while doing it. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason why I was voted for the most, mm -hmm. right? Because I was voted for 23 times. Dave was voted for once. Love the dude. 
epic player mm -hmm. and he deserves to win. But I know if I was sitting there, the story that I could tell about the moves that I made in which I used him to make those moves mm -hmm. and where they originally started from, I would say if I was a, somebody on the jury watching it, I'd be bloody impressed. Bloody yeah. And then if you add the other stuff. Plus add, <laughs> yeah. the, plus add the GST. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I would have been. That's what, that's, that's what we wanted. Well, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we wanted, wanted Davis. Like, Cause I've got, I don't know. Like yeah. it's such, a, and credit to your gameplay. It was sick to watch. And uh, I know Angus and I fanboying having here. I but had uh, like some crazy statistics. Like I went to tribal council six, 17 times and successfully voted someone out 15 times. Wow. I was voted for 24 times. I went to exile Island. I single handedly removed someone with fire. Um, mm. The things that I had lined up to sell my story was statistics. It wasn't just the, yeah, but he said, she said, so I did this. Mm -hmm. and, and Vinny, when you were watching Mo on TV, how did you feel? So you got my letter. Oh, when, oh, I, when I got the letter, the letter the yeah. Oh. So Vinny drew me his beautiful picture, yeah. which was um, our family. Oh, and that, a dog. That, yeah. And what was on the picture? Uh, Who me, was on there? Me. Yeah. You, Bella, my mum, my stepdad, Floki, I am, um, Aya, mum, um, Araha, uh, Barney. Ethan. Big yeah. picture. So she drew a lot. Like she drew this massive picture for me, which which is the first thing I opened and I just cried because I was yeah. like, oh, oh my God. I would have lost my shit. I did lose it. That's I it. was mm. crying for so long because I knew because she always draws, draws me little pictures at home and that was beautiful, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I loved getting that. But I oh, think, Vinny, um, look at your big smile on your face. <laughs> I think she liked it too. <laughs> I'll play a sport. Yeah, you do yeah. play sports. She used to play basketball. Oh, Maybe Vinny can go on Survivor. I no, tell you what. I can get scared. <laughs> Oh, get scared. You would do Ed. Survivor. You'd be good on Survivor. Yeah, I'm going to vote you off. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to vote me off. <laughs> <laughs> I can vote Mo off and then vote the golden go off. Go off. Just go against Sean. No. She went, when I voted Tarzan off, she didn't talk to me for two days. <laughs> 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 Who is your favorite person on Survivor? Mm, Zach. Zach. See, it's Zach not even me. Not even it's you. not even me. Oh. You're, you're more second for there. Oh, second, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Second. I, but I love that. Even when I play football, when I play for W, <laughs> I'm never her first favorite player. Um, <laughs> and that's okay because that's her choice. That's fine. Remember yeah. we went to Perth? Yeah. Last year? Yeah, when you went to Perth. We went to Perth. Me and Mama what, uh, fly over? Yeah, you did. They did fly I over. I went to sleep on plane. She loves planes. Oh. Yeah. I like boats. And boats. boats and I went planes. on, I went to Fiji last year. She went to Fiji on a boat as well. Oh, on a cruise ship. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Traveling more than us. Really. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No. More travel. Yeah. She saves up um, throughout the year and then does like a cruise at the end of the year. Cool. And Amazing. by saves up, I mean steals my money. And my, <laughs> I bought coffee every day on a cruise. Yeah. You still haven't paid rent though. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? I wanted to take happy. I went to Nice last year. Yeah, oh, you did. I'm, I'm not letting you go on any cruises at the moment. I'll take you on the cruise. Yeah. You no, yeah. We yes. can't go on cruises at the moment, no, no, but when next, we can. No, yeah. next time I'm going to take you on a cruise. Yeah, I'm down with no, that. I'm not. I'm not so wait, Mo. Who's, who's paying for that? Just... My mum. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Sure. I think one thing, uh, you know, monetary parts aside, I think uh, for your story in Survivor, the story of Vinny is really important for seeing people um, – see it a bit normalized on television and also having that emotional connection because it's just, it's sisters mm. and there was nothing else to it for, you know, there, I, there was no disability there. It was two sisters who love each other more than anything running towards <sighs> each other. And that's what really captured me. I, I didn't, there was no disability there, mm. but I, you know, thank you for that, especially with this podcast and being yeah. in this space. Do you know I think what it's the really thing important. is? You're the second person who's brought that up. And I'm like, oh, I didn't think of it in any other way than mm. she's just my sister of running course. out and giving me a big hug after missing me. So, <laughs> It's weird that people um, are seeing that side of it and going, oh, it's changed me. And I'm like, well, that's just, I didn't, I seen it for how it was, but I'm glad people can see for what it was. Yeah. It's um, funny when you're in the community, like I just thought, yeah, it's two sisters because I'm disabled. You know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. so, and it's so nice to educate other people it's the way that we think. It's because you're normal. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, there's a headline moving on from Survivor that I want to read out. It's from a year ago. Uh, it says Moana Hope and Sister Vinny, their inspiring relationship. Now, how do you feel? We, we always would very first episode, we always talk about the word inspiration when it comes to disability, because it doesn't sit well with a lot of people because it's just your normal. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about, you know, it's one of the first things that comes up when you write Moana and Vinny into Google. It's the first news source. So what do you think about when people say that your relationship is inspiring? Um, I would say it's mostly me cause I'm the funny one. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, you know what? The thing is, uh, for me, like I just said, um, I, like I see Vinny as Vinny. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the only time I need to explain her special needs uh, is when I need to explain her disability. Um, but, you know, she's just, she's my sister, my best friend. And, and I, you know what, putting, being around her um, just makes every day so great. And I know that sounds, I need to explain that a little bit more, but I love the way that she sees the world because there's so much um, hate and negativity in the world. But she doesn't see the world in any way, shape or form like that. And, you know, if you went and got 20 men from different parts of the world, different countries, different backgrounds, different skin colors, and you asked her, what was the difference? She would say, it's a man, it's a man, it's a man, it's a man. She wouldn't say dark skin, a, a gentleman from China or anything like that. It would just be, it's a man. She doesn't see, um, you know, she doesn't see race. She doesn't see um, disability. She doesn't see anything. She just sees people mm, and I pure. love that and yeah. I, I think that that's the way we should raise our kids because you know there's no difference between me and her you know she's just a little bit more special than me in a like in, a, in an a good amazing way. way yeah and I think you know I don't find Vinny inspiring for getting out of bed but I do find her inspiring for doing an hour and a half on the treadmill and 10 k's a day you know what I mean and mm. working on her fitness and going to school break and getting better <laughs> yeah <laughs> she likes I that. break free treadmill yeah okay yeah she... I'm running I'm running on treadmill at uh, Brunswick one and that no, I run it and smell smoke and there's you know, because you're running too fast. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's too good. <laughs> Fifty on. Okay. Yeah, run, yeah. run in. Too fast. It wasn't. It wasn't a treadmill. That was um, it was a treadmill for walking. And because Vinny got faster and faster, yes. Right. Um, she broke it. And, <laughs> and then we took another one. Okay. Yeah. And I broke that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then I broke that one. Uh, so I think to answer your question, mm -hmm. um, I never. Uh, you know, hang out with Vinny or have people, Vinny in my life for any other reason besides I love her and she's my best friend. But if that inspires people, I think that's a pretty beautiful mm, thing. And absolutely. I think that people can, people can take something away from it. That's pretty awesome. Well said. Well said. We're ready for our bowl of uncomfortable, Moana. And this is a question that might come from us. It might come from uh, someone on our social media. Yeah. There's a tiny little one before. Um, before we get into that. Oh, we can ask it after this actually. Okay. Um, okay. So these are people who are curious about uh, maybe what it's like to be a full-time carer, maybe about uh, living with Vinny. Uh, my question that I got through comes from Michael on our Facebook group. He says, hi, Moana, big fan. I uh, would have uh, loved to have seen you go to the final of Survivor. Got it out for you, Michael. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> um, what's the most physically uncomfortable part about being a carer? Um, uh, it's a great question. And thank you, Michael. I wish I got to the final two as well, because I would have been <laughs> a half a million dollars richer. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think for me, uh, the most uncomfortable thing, there's nothing uncomfortable about being a carer, but the uncom if there's any uncomfortable, it comes from, it comes from online or in the streets, bullies. Mm. Um, I think that's uncomfortable because that for me is hard to explain to a certain someone why people just yell out random hurtful stuff or say random hurtful stuff. So I think the most challenging thing for me is to protect, um, her kindness and, and love because, you know, me helping her is just like helping your best friend. And I'm not saying it's easy to be a full-time carer because there's challenges, but um, those challenges are worth it when it's, you know, especially with her and uh, how much I love her. Amazing. Good question. You are her primary caretaker and her protector and everything. Um, what if something happens to you? Do you worry about that? Um, I don't because I know Isabella um, has... Um, vowed her love to her for the rest of her life. Mm. Um, Vinny, she even wants Vinny to change her last name to Kallstrom. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> not yet. No, I want to stay with Hope. Okay. I don't want to change it. No, all right, yeah. all right. No, we're full. I'm, I'm changing mine. No, I want to next year. Oh, next year. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you want to change your name next, next year. year. Okay, next year. Um, so I know that Bella will take care of her, but I think this is kind of why I'm trying to work so hard to, you know, if I could... That's why one of my biggest dreams is to buy a house because that house um, wouldn't be solely, you know, it would be set up so that no matter what, if something was to happen, she would be taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I'm working hard. That's why I'm working full time, crazy hours to, you know, save. Mm. I got one more little one. Um, what would you say to people who would say that having someone with like an intellectual disability is an anchor on your life and holds you back? Because... There's a misconception if you have a child or a sister or a sibling with a disability that you can't do the things that you want to do in your life because you have to look after Vinny. Um, what would I say to a man? I, I would say come and hang out with us for a day. Um, 
and I would say like, oh, like uh, it's, it's I've never been asked that question. It's a great question, but um, that has never crossed my mind, so I wouldn't know how to answer it. I'd probably say, uh, man, if somebody said, okay, if I put it in this term, if somebody said to me, I can't uh, take care of that person because they're an anchor on me, I'd probably call them a prick. Mm-hmm. Um, That's right. Because well, I think the reason is because she's not. Yeah. Well, I think that you know. You can't just look at someone and go, you're disabled, that's it. We're putting you in a car- category, that's it, I'm done. Um, you know, look at the joy she brings us every day and look at the joy she can bring people and, and what she's able to achieve with love. And and that is amazing. So I feel like if somebody wants to turn down that, then that's their personal choice. But I wonder, you know, where that negative mindset came from. Um, I think it's up to all of us to change that bias that people have, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I know... Uh, my girlfriend Chantel gets like, oh yeah, but you know, you're not going to be able to do anything with Dylan. Like, you know, what about kids? You're going to be able to look after them. What about all the things you're missing out on? And she's like, I don't miss out on anything. Yeah. Like there might be some things I miss out on, but everything I gain in other areas, I think. And you know, I think it's a perfect example with you and Vinny that she might not contribute financially or whatever, but she contributes in other ways to your relationship mm-hmm. because of the person that she is. I think people, some people are just very uneducated, very, very uneducated. And I think the more time, more time you spend in the media. And people like yourself and people that, I guess, the more people that get to meet Vinny um, and other people like like her and me and you and you and the more people that's been around with somebody that they love that um, is special needs or has a disability, the more that they will see that, you know, between me and her, there's no not much real difference except she's more famous than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've spent, you know, a considerable amount of time hearing how much you love your sister. I think we'd like to end this podcast by hearing from Vinny. What is the... One thing you love the absolute most about your sister, Mo. What's your favorite thing about me? Phone call. Mm-hmm. Well, the user, your make is third. Yeah. Make a third round. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to like, yes, more and make it, yes, more and I got to ring my one, make it more. And what else? Down the air for CD. And what else is your favorite thing? What do we do every day? What's your favorite thing to do with me every day? Coffee. Yes. Hmm? Coffee? It's our favorite thing to do. <laughs> every morning I start work at five, six, and she'll jump up out of bed and we'll have a, we have a celery juice and we have a coffee together nice. and we just talk about life. Yes. And, you know, I think um, like Vinny, the one thing about Vinny is it's the small things in life. And I love that. Yeah. It's, it's like for her birthday when we first started, she spoke about how she got 30 bucks. She took that 30 bucks like it was a half a million, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so that moment of sitting there and having a coffee and just talking about her day or my day makes her day, uh, makes her day. Good. And, I, my and I love that. Too. Yeah. And her teachers, we talk about everything and, Christy. and <laughs> she chews me ears off and I love it. Hey, I can't thank you both enough for coming on. Mo, you and I have been lucky to speak on panels and things together before. And I've heard you speak, um, you're bloody awesome and you can help a lot of people with your story. You too, Vinny. You can, you can both, you're a good tandem. How do people <laughs> get in touch with you? What's the best way to do, to, to do some work with you guys? Because you are doing incredible stuff. Yeah. I do love going and doing appearances and it's, um, it's, it's funny you say that because a lot of people have been lately been asking to get Vinny on as well. Hey. Um, get and the, get the kish, Vinny. Yeah. And we've, we've done some photo shoots together as well. So we've done some work for, Vinny's done some work for Maya, which is huge. <laughs> Um, Vinny. so we did a photo shoot just recently with Maya, which, um, Shout to Maya. it was a package, uh, and I and wasn't Cindy being, too. I wasn't getting it unless Vinny was in it and right. Cindy too. And we filmed the new ad, we filmed an ad for special K. So <laughs> I love that people were like, oh, we want you, but we're not getting you unless we get Vinny. And I'm <laughs> like, well, um, that means Vinny's finally paying rent, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and her wife have that. Too. Yeah, you did. And they, f- her favorite TV show in the world is Home and Away. Oh. And Channel 7 surprised her by flying her to Sydney <sighs> and took her on set to meet the Home and Away folks. What? Um, I want to act on Home and Away one day. Let's do it together, Vinny. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on Home and Away. Who's Good. your favorite Home and Away character? Quick. Who's Quick. your favorite one? Um, Mason. Mason. Mm. Nice. He passed away. There you go. Oh, he passed away. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Someone. Yeah. Rest uh, in peace. No, no, no. Basically, when you work in the hospital, the sh- last season. Yeah. What's it called? The five people. Yeah. Five people. Uh, in mm. the hostage. Oh, in the hostage. Yeah. The hostage system. Yeah. And, yeah. and Luca got ate too much tablet. So yeah. Yeah. And this was again. And bang. She Done. Back and that yeah. no. Has right. Oh. You know. You know the sweetest thing ever is when she met the home and away people. 
there was one guy that was a villain on the show and she wouldn't say <laughs> <laughs> So she uh, rightfully so she too. doesn't understand it's a um the fiction, yeah. Scripted. Uh, really, really, yeah. yeah. So when she when they she got introduced to this very popular young man that any party in the world would be excited to say hi yeah. to, she was like, no. no it's so good. <laughs> you need to go and apologize to her right now. <laughs> oh, I'm not talking to you. So <laughs> she wouldn't talk to him unless he apologized to the person that he upset on the show, which was adorable. That's beautiful. And last thing, which we'll probably edit back in a bit earlier. You come back to footy? You're going to play footy again? Oh, yeah. I do want to play footy again. Yeah. I'm trying to have a fam start a family with Belle at the moment. <clears throat> Congratulations. Belle's going to carry. Yep. Um, so we're in the process of doing that with, with Monash IVF. And depending on um, what comes of that, I, I would love to play footy again. I am training at the moment. But it depends on where life is. I think life is too short. And if I can play footy without, um, I guess, the mental side of bringing me down, Absolutely. So I'm just working on that at the moment. Fingers crossed. Well, hopefully, you know, people get around you more because I know that you have been, uh, in the firing line for some online hate, which is just hurts me because I know you personally now and I liked you before we even met and you're a beautiful person who's doing some awesome stuff and you too, Vinny. And hopefully, you know, you two sharing your story helps a lot of people and educates a lot of people, but also, you know, entertains and inspires, as you said. And I know, Gus and I were stoked to have you here. Yeah, we are. I'm Moana Hope on Instagram, where you can get all your Vinny content as well. And you are with Chic Management. So if people do want to get in contact, they oh, can go yeah. through there. Yeah, so it's on my Instagram anyway, so yeah. you can check that out. The links are all there. We appreciate your time so much, guys. Thank you so much. Can I Thank be you. your manager, Vinny? <laughs> yes, you Yes. Just, I'll think about I'll it. Take, <laughs> I'll take 20%. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'll negotiate yes, off there. Yeah, yes, you're my favourite. You're funny on the TV, so uh, okay. I was like, come on, I don't I'm don't taking know. 20%, Vinny. We're going <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> you're crazy, that one. On the TV, is that yeah. Ring. We're still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Vinny. Thank you.